Hey sneaker friends, welcome to another episode of Sneaker Knowledge. Today we're going to have a look at the midsole. The midsole portion of the shoe is generally the area of the shoe that's between the upper and the outsole. The primary purpose of the midsole is really cushioning. It also is responsible for a little bit of stability, but it's primarily the main material that's used to absorb the shock in every step you take. So because it's related to cushioning, it also has to impact your comfort. So cushioning, comfort, shock absorption, and a little bit of stability. Let's take a look at a variety of different midsoles. Before we look at any midsoles, keep in mind there are some shoes that have no midsole whatsoever. So think of track spikes. Some of the shorter sprinting races, a lot of times it's just a plate on the bottom of an upper. Sometimes there might be a very thin layer of cushioning. Baseball and football cleats are also particular. Sometimes they have midsoles in them, sometimes they do not. It depends on the player, the player's location on the field, and how they want to feel underfoot. Why might you not want a midsole in some shoes? Well, it's, it's merely a difference of weight sometimes. So if an athlete is gonna be doing an activity for a short period of time, they may not want a midsole in there because they don't need the cushioning and they don't need the extra weight. If you look at how fast some of these sprints happen in the Olympics, I mean, they're literally, they have the shoes on for a few minutes. It's not enough to require cushioning. So if we take a look at a pretty standard midsole, this is the Pegasus 35 by Nike. This is all foam midsole. And in this particular case, it has an airbag inside of it. Midsoles can be made of a variety of different materials. Most of the time they do have a foam component. There is scenarios where for example, Nike has an air system. It's called Nike Air. This shoe, the Vapor Max acronym, has a full airbag underneath, so they don't have any sort of foam cushioning under your foot. So you're just literally standing on this plastic air. A few of the other brands also have similar gel type cushionings, but a majority of the cushionings you see are going to be foam based. If we stick with running and have a look at the Adidas Solar Glide, now this shoe has boost in the midsole, and so the primary part of the midsole is the boost foam. The boost foam gives a great squishy, soft feel underfoot. Most of the time when you're feeling underfoot, the different feel of stiffness or firmness or softness or squishiness, that's all coming from the midsole foam that's underneath. And these foams, based on their chemical composition, they can create, chemists can create different properties in them. But then it also comes down to the designer and how they design the shape of the midsole. You'll notice these shoes, for example, in this shoe, the midsole comes out past the upper quite a bit. You know, it sticks off, it hangs off a little bit, and it hangs off in the back also. All of that is designed in to give you more of a comfort feeling and stability feeling. Now, midsoles are different for different sports, right? For running, which is most of the shoes that I've showed you, the primary purpose of the midsole is to shock absorb. In every step you take, it's to absorb some of that shock, which is actually absorbing some of that energy, but it's making it easier on your joints so that it's a bit more comfortable. But the, the goal is to absorb that, give some back, and keep you moving, right? So in a basketball shoe though, typically you will find the midsoles to be a bit thinner and the foam to be a little bit more hard because basketball is a different sport. Running is a linear sport. So running, you basically, there's not a lot of cutting or side to side movements in running, but in basketball, the side to side movements are called lateral movements. And so there's lots of lateral movements. So if you were to have, for example, if you were to play basketball in this running shoe, there's no medial to lateral stability. So when you're cutting from this side to this side, there's a good chance you're gonna slide a little bit and the foam might not be quite as supportive. Where in a basketball shoe, and so this is the Jordan 23, it has, see these huge plates on the side? This is lateral stability, and that's keeping you from sliding back and forth. So the integrated system of a basketball shoe is a bit more complex than a running shoe. But you'll notice the midsole in this shoe, it's primarily, it's, it's hard to see because there's a lot of plates in basketball. And this shoe does in fact have plates, and it also is a bit more rigid than your typical running midsole. So basketball's a little firmer, a little shorter, um, and it also has a lot more plates and other components that are helping create the technical needs for the athletes. You'll notice this Hoka Oni Oni Clifton 5 is a much thicker midsole. This just demonstrates a different philosophy on midsoles and cushionings. They use a lot more thickness of foam to get the feeling underfoot for their athletes. Offset in a shoe is the height of the heel compared to the forefoot. 
So when you're in your bare feet, just standing, there's zero offset, which means your heel and your forefoot are at the same level. Generally, to make shoes more comfortable, they raise the heel up. And so a common offset is 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters, but there's been a lot of brands coming out lately in the past several years with zero offset. Now, why does that matter? Well, it just offers you a more of a level of comfort. It raises your heel up just slightly, taking some pressure off the Achilles and the calf muscle. When you're engineering and designing a shoe and figuring out all the function of it, knowing the offset and planning for the offset is very important. Some brands have started to advertise with their shoes what the offset is in the shoe. So you can learn and find out, you know, in, in this Peg Turbo, it's a 10 millimeter offset and I like that. Well, this Adidas shoe also has 10 millimeter offset, so it will probably feel the same to me. Now, if you jumped into this Hoka shoe, it only has a five millimeter offset. So you might notice a difference. You might actually feel like you're tipping back a little bit. And then the shoes that have zero offset are also, you might feel like you're tipping back a little bit because you're so used to being pitched forward with a little bit of a higher offset. All right, that pretty much covers it for midsoles. Let me know if you have any questions, post them down and we'll do a midsoles 2.0 because I definitely want to talk to you guys about how I measure hardness and why it matters. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe now and hit that notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. Have an awesome day.